Hey, it's Bridget. Hi. I know I'm in all black today. I know, I know. This video, Fairy Grasshoppers, is for you and we're going to talk about inspiration. I'm going to share with you how I try to stay inspired. I know I talk a lot here about doing our work, doing the work. What is that? What does that mean? Let's have a little pre-conversation about that and then let's talk about inspiration. Today I got my water, as I always do, in my Minnie Mouse mug or my Minnie Mouse container. <laughs> mm. So I also have my Minnie Mouse earrings on that I got. I'm not a big dangle earring or hoop earring fan. I'm just not, probably because I have short hair or because I just don't want, I don't, I don't know. It just seems like extra, like pulling me down kind of thing sometimes. I just, it depends on how heavy they are, I guess. Let's say that. But these I got from a really good friend of mine who I've been to Disney World with. And if you know anything about me, Bridget, here on Fairy Grasshopper, you know that I love Disney, right? I love Disney. I love Disney. And that is one of my inspirations. It inspires me. It helps me feel innovative and creative and relaxed and fun. And so it really brings a lot to me just being at Disney World, specifically Disney World. I like Disneyland too, but it's really t kind of smaller and crunchier, tinier, too many people in the small space. So world, I like Disney World. One of my major inspirations. So before that though, let's talk about the work. What does that mean when I talk about that? Like you have to do your work, do your work. I don't mean how some people, some spiritual development folks talk about doing the work as this like you need to go through a dark night of the soul you need to be miserable you need to feel awful you need to be crying all the time and depressed and wanting to crawl out of your skin because that means you're doing your work because that means you're discovering yourself well, let me just tell you i know that's very dramatized what i just did here but it really does feel deep and intense like that. And I do sometimes feel like I just want to rip my skin off because inside I feel the sting of my own work. And what that means is for me anyway, I can share with you my perspective is I do not believe that you have to get dark and go into this deep state of depression and withdrawal and separation and isolation and go inside and banish everyone that you love and every good thing you can't be happy for a couple of days or weeks or whatever it is for you because you're going through something very real very very intense or because you're choosing to go work on some of your past stuff so some of the reoccurring patterns or themes or belief systems you're actually going in on purpose to try to dig up on purpose some of that crap on purpose so that you can work with it i don't believe in going on purpose to just find problems. <laughs> I believe we focus on the power of the present and what shows up in our present moment that gives us awareness about a past pattern or belief system that is no longer helpful or is really sabotaging us and creating more resistance. Sometimes that stuff can be revealed to us in really unexpected ways and that's when you do your work. That's what your work is. Your work is to let yourself be aware and then your work is to access the power of your choice and then use your freedom and independent sovereignty to go into what that means to you. And when I say go in, I mean go into your heart. You don't have to go deep into the low belly, into the cauldron. You don't have to do that. Start with your heart because chances are there's a lot of information that is stored and kept treasured and sacred in your heart space. And that empaths, the sensitive feeling being that you are, that is where the magic really is for your own healing. Healing isn't an event. It's not something you discover. I fully believe that it's an energy that you possess, that you can wrap around you like a blanket at any time. It's accessible to everyone at all times. It doesn't mean an outcome. It means a process. It means a lifestyle, a way in which you live your life. Now, if you're going into a deeper healing journey because you've experienced very physical trauma or very emotional trauma or something very devastating, like a massive life-changing event or a defining moment, or had a memory of that, very real, very intense in the heart space, 
that is a time that when you're doing your work, to especially be so gentle on yourself. Don't rush it, don't push it, don't force it. Do not listen to advice. Do not listen to advice. Don't listen to my advice even. Like seriously, nobody's gonna find your answers for you, your quick fix, your magic pill. If that were the case, if that even existed, all these diet programs and plans wouldn't even be in place. Let's be honest. There's no like instantaneous magical fixes, right? The miracle is you being in the process of being present for yourself through awareness and then through positive, healthy life choices to liberate, use your independence and let yourself really show up for yourself. Maybe it's through just this gentle compassion, healing energy, just the wrapping around you, not to find answers, not to fix it, to be with the energy of the emotion. And that's where the freedom comes from, the emotion. I've recently talked about heart shakti in a small group that I worked with. And the energy of heart shakti is this power of this fire that holds the space and keeps you warm inside and tends to the love that is within you until you can come to the fire and appreciate that warmth for yourself. Until you come to the fire and resource that energy for positive, positive choices for your life. And, and it's small little day-to-day -day choices. It's little thoughts. It's little connections to just beauty and noticing something like a, a gorgeous sky. I mean, it's really that simple, but it's also so complex because of the layers of emotions and energy that we are connected to and attached to that it can make it really complicated and can feel really heavy. And doing your deep, dark work, I, I do not... Um, don't go looking for problems. Let your life show you where best you can make the most use of your focused time for your healing, whether it be through your meditations, through your walks in nature, through your journaling, through weekend retreats that you create for yourself, whatever that looks like for you. Give yourself that room to be with yourself because you will find that you are your best advocate. You are your best friend. You are your best advisor. So if you want advice, go to your heart, not just pure with emotion, but to your heart where you can find this energy of resourcefulness, of understanding that there is complexity and there is dynamic movement here in understanding your mind and the values and belief systems and the structures that you have and, and letting yourself just be with the feeling of, I don't know, I don't know what this means. Don't make it mean anything. Don't make it mean something it's not, just so you can plug it into a place and check it off a list. That's not what healing work is. That's not what doing your work means to check off a list. That's not what it is. It's about being present for the process and recognizing that processes overlap and that you're never really done. Life is a work in progress, right? You've heard that before. Artists know this. Even when you're done with your painting or you're done with your book, you find edits you wanna make, you question whether you should have included this story or that story, or you question, okay, so maybe I should add this, lighten this up or highlight this on the canvas. You know, there's so many, everything is, nothing is ever really done, but you, that's because you are already complete. We come in whole and complete. And we come here to have the experiences. And that's what doing your work is about. It's not because you're bad and you're messed up and you screwed something up, so now you gotta pay for that. Oh my goodness, there's not a debit owing. It's not about that balance of debt and owing or receiving and giving. It's this, this understanding that everything is moving, everything is fluid, everything is energy, and the essence of who you are is about showing up for you as you are in any given dynamic moment. Okay, so that's what doing your work means. So to stay inspired, don't take things too seriously. I know even if you're in a serious situation, like you're battling cancer, or you just had a death, or you lost a job, or whatever that is for you, or you have a relationship that is changing, or has dis dissolved, you might have very serious circumstances, situations that are affecting you, and they're affecting your emotions as an empath. But don't take any one thing too seriously so that you take it on and it define you. Like put it on your head like a big label and this is my definition of what everything is about. This is why, this is the scapegoat, this is the fault, this is the reason, this is the problem. No, 
Don't let any one thing have that much dominant control over your life theme, your life story, your beautiful flow and unfolding. You are a dynamic energy essence. You cannot commit to just one particular energetic theme or way of being because you have layers and inter dimensional grids that you're connected to and things that you just can't even possibly fathom, I can't even possibly fathom, that is moving and it's so dynamic. And so just acknowledge that that's just, that's the way it is. There's a creative process going on. You're part of that creative process and don't take any one thing too seriously. Your mind will do that. It will focus on something because that's its job is to create structure through focus. That's what creates belief patterns and systems and structures. And that's how you operate and function. That's what the mind does. So you function through this thing that has been created by a series of other things that have been put together through your mind's eye reference. So now that you are aware and awoke individual and are working with your empathic emotions, acknowledging that emotions that are coming into you are energy information and the emotions that are coming from you are giving you guidance and advisement. You as your own inner guide, you as the one that is the, the, the wisdom keeper for yourself, the most wise one, the most qualified to lead you. So do not take things too seriously. And by that, I also mean not too personally. So if you're watching an, uh, something unfolding with somebody else, whether it be online, an argument, a discussion, a dialogue, don't interject yourself. Don't insert yourself. You have enough to deal with as it is. Be a compassionate observer. Let that unfold. And don't take that energy on as its personal energy. When you're witnessing something, take the role of an observer. Like you're a fan in the stand. You're not a member of the band. You're a fan in the stand. That is such a good line. You are a fan in the stand and you're not in the band. <laughs> That's good. We should do a whole video on that. I see a Sunday morning coffee episode on Above Life channel. Every week, Sunday morning coffee podcast. That, all about that. You are a fan in the stand, not a member of the band. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. I love that. I love that. Okay. So don't make it personal, basically. All right. Not too serious, not too personal, because then you get attached to things that have really not much to do to help you. <laughs> okay. So in order to stay inspired, choose positive inputs or healthy, healthy energetic alliances. So align up with more healthy energy choices by listening to podcasts that are inspiring, funny, funny, laugh. Something so funny that you can laugh about. Not too sarcastic, that gets a little bit off track. A little bit is okay, but too much, it's like coffee or alcohol. A little bit is okay, but too much is, makes you sick. Nobody wants you that way. Mm -mm. So, a little bit okay, but funny laugh. Something funny, humorous. And a podcast or um, a favorite um, show that really gets you um, into positive vibration. And you can tell because it, it makes your, you just feel open and kind of flowy. <laughs> you feel like air, like the clouds, like the sky. It feels like everything's moving and nothing's sticking to you. Sometimes when you're listening to like a morning show and they're being super sarcastic or very opinionated, it, even if you agree with the opinions or it's your kind of humor, it can come at you like bugs on a windshield and then your windshield wiper fluid isn't working and you can't quite get it off and you're not sure why you can't quite see clearly the rest of the day. And it's because you have all this crap that came at you from this thing that you thought was funny or entertaining and really it affected your energy. So be aware of the inputs and choose positive inputs. By positive, I don't just mean the world is perfect and everything is great. I mean inspirational stuff, like stories from people who have, um, that, that inspire you. It might be an author that you love. It might be an athlete, a story of an athlete. It might be somebody overcoming addiction that gives you this hope. It might be someone who's surviving cancer. It might be somebody who started a nonprofit. It might be um, someone who is, is saving animals. Or I mean, there's a, so many beautiful energies of positive flow and that you just need to plug into that to receive that. So focus on positive inputs. That's something I've talked about for years, positive inputs, okay? So let's, re let's recap. So for inspiration to stay inspired, <laughs> don't take things too personally. Do not, I'm trying to remember the first one here. So, cause I kind of separated them out. So 
Do not take things seriously. There we go, too serious. Keep it. Do not make any one thing to define you, okay? Not too serious, not too personal. When other things are going on, don't make it yours. And then choose positive inputs, things that are hopeful. Um, that can be music as well. Um, watch the lyrics because the lyrics are going into your mind. So even if it's a good tune and it's lyrics that are disrespecting you, the type of group that you belong to, the person that you are, the world, whatever, your views, um, you don't want something that's going to add to conflict. So watch the lyrics. Maybe it's a poem. Maybe it's a, a, a card. You flip a positive input card or a pop-up card or something. Those kinds of things, right? Do that, use that over and over and over again. All right, so that's just a start. So we've talked about doing the work, what I mean by that, and we've talked about in um, staying positive. So cheers to that. Let's have some water. And for me today, it's like Disney. Disney, my positive input is Disney. Yes. I have some little sacred geometry too that I'm wearing today that helps too, but. All right. Hey, have a good day. Thanks for watching Fairy Grasshopper channel. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because I do two or three videos every week here. I try to do them on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Sometimes I do lots of extras. Really, I get on a roll and I can't not talk to you. So don't miss out. Make sure you get notifications. All right. I hope I've inspired your spirit today, filled you with some hope. Remember, this is your life after all. It's your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for being here.